Hi guys, Rasmus here, and today we're doing a video about my new amp, which is this uh, Marshall JVM uh, 410H. Uh, there's also a JS version of this, so there's basically two versions of this. And one is so just the standard version, which is this, and then there's the uh, Joe Satriani signature, um, which is obviously different. I don't know how it's different, it might be the same, it might not. So if you're looking into buying that amp, maybe find another video. But anyways, this is on the H version of this. Um, so yeah, this is not really kind of a in-depth demo with a produced track and all that stuff. Uh, we're just gonna be playing through the the uh, the different channels and and hear what we can do. Um, so I'm playing uh, a Jackson uh, Chris Broderick Soloist Seven Pro thing made in Indonesia, I think, um, with Sima Duncan Black Winter and a PAF Pro, it might be called, <laughs> in the uh, in the neck. Um, yeah, and. For recording the amp, it's going into an EV8 2x12, so a close back that I have down here, you can't see it. Um, and that is mic'd with two SM57s uh, set up in a Fredman configuration, so where one is pointing straight at the cabinet and one is like at an angle. Um, so that's on one cone. And then on the other speaker, I have an SE Electronics um, SE 2000A something uh, condenser mic. So it's a big condenser mic and I'm mixing those two signals to hopefully give you a pretty pretty good representation of what this amp sound like. So for the amps itself, um, we have four channels. So we have clean, crunch, an OD1, an OD2. And then we have a master section over here where we have two master volumes. Um, obviously only using one at the moment and just have that pretty low. And then there's resonance and presence. So resonance is like a very low end um, EQ, EQ uh, section. So I guess it's like below 100 Hertz that you're sort of boosting with that. And then the presence, um, I think that's like the really, really highest. Um, sometimes it depends on the amp. Sometimes the treble is the highest and then the presence is in the middle or the reverse kind of how, how high frequency wise they go. But anyway, I'm just keeping those sort of roughly in the middle. And then lastly, we have a, a reverb section. Um, it's like a digital built-in reverb and you can turn it off on and off for each of the different channels. Now, there's a lot of kind of uh, options with this amp. So there's four channels, but each of those channels have three different kind of settings, a green, an orange, and a red setting. Um, so let's uh, just dive in. Um, and we're gonna start on the clean channel here on the green setting, so that's like the cleanest it can go. And the controls that we have are uh, bass, middle and treble, and then a volume and a gain. Um, and for the clean set, uh, channel here, which so the, the green clean channel, um, actually the gain is the volume, so let's try that. <laughs> Um, so you are not even really able to add any gain to the first channel um, or the first version of the first channel. You're just able to adjust the volume. And of course you can use the master volume to then kind of compensate. But yeah, uh, this is just kind of everything straight up. Um, and it sounds pretty good, I think. just on the uh, on the neck pickup here um so let's try and add a bit of reverb so engaging the reverb here and then i have the clean channel here and i can dial up to like kind of one third or something like that sounds like this so like a, a nice kind of uh, tail of the reverb but you're not really able to control how long or which type of delay it's just one type of delay and then you can control the mix so something like this Yeah, sounds pretty good, I think. Um, yeah, and we can try and do some split sounds. So this is the neck pickup split it. Yeah. And the middle position. And 
und Neck. And that uh, solved the clean channel. Um, I guess we can try and mess around with the EQ a bit. So maybe take out a bit of mid, add a bit of, uh, of bass, and maybe also cut the treble a bit. I think it's it's fairly bright sounding as it is right now. So going back to the neck pickup, um, we have. A bit warmer sound, I think we can get out of that. Um, but because there's like 12 channels, let's uh, move on to uh, the next one. So this is the clean channel in the orange mode. Um, so now we have the gain that actually acts as a gain. And then we have the volume, which acts as a volume. So it's not like a huge different. Um, tonally, it's pretty much this. It's the same, right? I just think it's added one more um, Gain states, so probably just another tube in there driving, um, driving it a bit harder. So yeah, this is like slightly, uh, so yeah, there's a, a tiny bit of, of drive. Um, I guess we can try and crank it up halfway, see what we get. Yeah, I'm not really a kind of martial aficionado uh, at all, but I think this is sort of what you would call maybe a plexi sound. Um, so I guess the, the, the clean channel, the green one, um, that's not really based on anything, it's just a nice clean channel. And then, um, as per my understanding, I think the the kind of the, the bit harder driven mode of the clean and the crunch, those are sort of equivalent to the um, martial plexi, so pretty sought after, but kind of the same circuit. And uh, I think for the crunch, it's sort of reminiscent of a JCM 800, so also pretty sought after. And I guess also used for metal, I think like um, Slayer used that on the first couple of records uh, or something like that. So. Neck pick up. Clean thread that we all love so much. Um. I guess this is sort of what you would call like a blues, kind of slightly, slightly driven. Um, I'm th really thinking somebody, uh, some old, an old uh, guy, an old lawyer with a with a Les Paul would uh, <laughs> would be good for this, right? Kind of a uh, dad rock territory. And engaging its own guitar and and removing a bit of the high end.
anyways, so uh, let's uh, let's move on. Uh, maybe yeah, add a bit more of the mid because we're getting to more driven sounds. So this is then the. Um, so now we have the clean channel in the in the red mode, and let's try and run it at like uh, nine o'clock again. See what we have. Mm. Yeah, so that's sort of a, I would call that a crunch sound, even though this is on the clean channel. So even the clean channel, you can you can have it sounding pretty dirty. Gotta turn down the volume a bit, turn the gain up to like half. Cut the bass a bit. Not really something I would use for metal, but again, a very, I guess this is sort of a, a, a good rock sound. Um, not really rock guitarist, but. It This is uh, definitely a, a good option. Um, so let's just try and, and crank the gain full just to see how much gain there is on, on the clean channel in the red mode. Yeah, I guess as if you put a drive in front, you could probably use the uh, the clean channel for for metal. So uh, that's uh, that's good to know. Um, we have in terms of which gain sound we want, because if even the clean channel can can do metal, then we probably have a lot of different variations on the same theme then. If I go to the seven swing, because well, I haven't seven swing, so it's a low B. It kind of uh, it sounds more more like it's. It becomes a fuss for the low note. Not really, uh, yeah, a kind of go-to metal sound, but maybe uh, it's slightly reminiscent of an HM2 without owning an HM2. Just have like a tube screw and add more gain. Um, maybe that could work. So anyways, um, Let's move on to the uh, crunch channel. So again, this is now in a clean mode. So I'm just gonna turn up the volume and gain to nine o'clock. And I guess we're gonna need more volume than that. Yeah, so there's definitely some overlap between the channels, right? So the, the clean channel you can have so to a higher gain, then you have the crunch channel. So this is the crunch channel on the green mode. Um, it seems like 
seems like the input channel has a bit more bass removed, so make it like a little bit tighter and distort in a bit more kind of pleasing way. So it sounds a bit tighter and also works better on the um, on the uh, seven string. A lot like kind of totally gent territory, obviously, but seems pretty decent. Let's uh, try to add some more gain. Yeah, great. Um, and without further ado, let's just go to the orange mode. Can we get a bit more gain? Note I don't have any reverb on this, I'm just running it. Bone to dry. Yeah, so this is pretty reminiscent to the first channel. It's not sonically totally different. It seems to work roughly the same territory with a bit more gain and a bit less low end, um, just to kind of keep it together. And yeah, for like a lot of kind of more old school guitarists, I guess this first two channels is probably all you need in terms of gain and sound. Let's just try the, uh, the red channel, see what we get. So now we've done sort of the clean and crunch channels. So now let's move on to OD1. And yeah, again, it also has a green and an orange and a red mode. So let's start in the green mode, see what we get here. Volume and some gain. And just the EQ straight up. And again, it feels pretty much like we're taking over where the crunch channel left off, um, but we're taking a, a bit more significant jump in terms of, of distortion here. Honestly, for all these, <clears throat> and honestly, for all these channels, they're pretty well balanced, kind of out the gate. So with just the bass, middle, and treble um, set to to twelve. Um, but let's uh, let's try and add a bit more gain because that's yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> So we still have kind of not really enough gain to do like kind of high gain lead. Um, this is sort of a yeah high mid gain tone, I guess. <laughs> The 
gain is at two o'clock. Let's just try and, and max the gain just for. Not really that tight and again slightly fuzzy in the low end. Um, anyway, let's kind of dial the gain back and try and go to the orange. <laughs> Compared to like a lot of kind of more modern high gain amps like the uh, 6505 or the EVH 5150 that I also have, um, this seems to have uh, be a little less about the low end. Um, it has more mids and it has sort of a kind of twang to it um, in the distortion. <laughs> definitely like a, a very different characteristic um, to again there's more kind of conventional hiking amps and uh, yeah as you can also hear um, if I dial up the gain to like 12 this amp starts to become pretty noisy at higher gain settings and that's just a kind of fact it doesn't like when you play it doesn't shine that much through it's not as fizzy as uh, a 655 can be, but just when there's no sound, you just have this mm, hum going on. So I'm gonna uh, turn on a uh, TZ electronic uh, sentry noise gate. That's gonna at least help partially with that, um, so that you don't get totally insane. And uh, yeah, so let's play this. <laughs> Yeah, and I would say on kind of the uh, the orange version of the OD1, gain halfway up, we start to get into like a good lead tone, I would say. So let's try and add some uh, some reverb to this uh, this bad boy. <laughs> some of that and try and see gain at like three o'clock so pretty high <laughs> So it seems that at least this channel, the more we increase the gain, the more low end we get, but the more fussy the low end also seems to become. Um, and especially here on the on when I play the seventh string. Anyway, let's try to go to the, uh, the red channel, um, gain back to 9 o'clock again. Oops, 
let's turn out that we have. Um, so now we seem to have a high gain sound, um, a bit like on the orange uh, channel, but the low, but we don't get that much low end, and it's not as fuzzy. So I guess it's there's a bit of a difference there. Do you take like the, the green or the orange version of the OD1 and run it at high gain, or do you take like the red channel and run it at lower gain? Um, and the low end response will be pretty different, it seems. But uh, let's try more game, because that's why we're here, right? Yeah, and it sounds great, but it's almost a bit too much gain, right? But... So let's try and, and reduce the mids a bit, increase the bass a bit, and maybe roll the gain back down to like, uh, what is this, like 4 or kind of 10 o'clock? So a lot of the volume is definitely in the middle control. Um, so if you roll that off, then you will have more uh, or have less volume. So uh, let's try and just increase the bass a lot and crop the middle, kind of also a good bit. <laughs> It does seem to become a little less twangy and a bit more modern sounding, kind of scooping out those mids and increasing the bass, um, but it, it still has that twangy character to it. It's not a bad thing, it's just it's a bit different than what other amps I have usually sound like. So lastly, we have um, the OD2, uh, so let's uh, check that out. So here I'm just on the green version of the OD2. So as you can hear, the OD2 doesn't really have kind of a ton more gain than the OD1, um, but it's slightly different. And to start with, I had a hard time hearing the difference, so I actually had to kind of go and read a bit on it. Um, and what Marshall say, I think, is that the voicing going into the amp, so like how much of the, how they cut the input signal, how they filter the input signal is a bit different. So I think they cut more low end here. Um, and then the, uh, the middle uh, EQ is also set to uh, like a finger higher frequency. So as I understood it, the OD1 has the uh, middle frequency be around 500 hertz. So that's why you boost the cut. And on this, it's more like uh, 650 or 700 hertz. So it's a bit higher. So the the character is a bit different. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's hear some more. <laughs> And it's definitely a bit more dry sounding. So I guess kind of, yeah, reducing the uh, the input on the, uh, or the, the bass on the input uh, definitely cleans it up a lot. A bit like it would be if you ran a tube streamer into an amp, right? Um. Yeah. 
not really enough gain to sort of really play metal on the on the green uh, mode. So let's go to the orange mode. Reduce gain down to nine o'clock. That is very dry sounding. And a bit piercing almost. Um, anyway, let's add some more gain. And if it's like the other chance, the more gain will add a bit more bass in. Sound, make it sound a bit fuller. Which it definitely does. Let's try and, and cut the mids uh, a bit, just to hear that kind of apparent different mid frequency. Yeah, and you can get it sounding even more modern that way. Um, Let's uh, let's try and and run the gain at like two or three o'clock. Turn the middle down again. Again, getting a bit too much low end out of it. Uh, I sort of like the gain at twelve one o'clock. Seems to have the right balance of like dry but still full sounding. So lastly, let's go to the uh, the red mode on the OD2, and uh, yeah, I'll just gonna pull the middle back to 12 o'clock, and let's hear. We'll go. Pretty high gain, um, even with like the gain at nine o'clock, um, but still pretty tight. Still has a bit of that twang, so let's try and, and see if we can sort of reduce a bit. That's that's cool. Um, doesn't really give that much to to crank down the middle. Um, I sort of like having it actually. Um, it's it's a character that is, and it sounds good. Um, it's just different. So let's try and run more games. So this is twelve o'clock. <laughs> In my mind, it's a little too dry sounding for for lead. I prefer the uh, the orange or the red channel of the OD1 for that. So uh, for me, the OD2 is definitely like the rhythm channel, and the OD1 is the lead channel um, when we're talking high gains. And then you have yeah the crunch, crunch and the clean to do whatever sort of clean and blue sounds you want, right? <laughs> Uh, 
pretty chunky. Um, let's kind of just scoop it and see what we get. And the final test is, of course, uh, running the gain even higher. So not totally maxed out. I'll do that in a bit. So this is three o'clock. Bit more middle. All the way. Yeah, that's definitely too much gain, and it's also quite noisy even with the noise gate on. Um, the noise gate is not reducing the signal to zero; it's just cutting some dB off. Um, <coughs> yeah. So honestly, let's. Uh, Back to more reasonable sound, so like the uh, OD1 on the uh, version. So that was my uh, my look at the uh, JBM 410H, um, not maybe the best name, but a pretty uh, pretty awesome amp. Uh, a lot of great tones, a lot of I think historic uh, Marshall tones in this. So there's both the plexi sounds of the first channel, and then sort of the JCM 800 uh, ish sounds on the uh, second channel. I haven't uh, tried either of those amps, but from like hearing online demos, like yeah, that sounds pretty much what I expected sort of those amps to sound like. Um, so there's there's a lot of bang for the buck. Um, so I think from new these amps are around twelve hundred euros, and I brought mine for six hundred euros. So got it at a half price uh, used, uh, but it had been sitting in a rehearsal room for a year and been used a bit, but but it's uh, still in pretty good shape. And uh, yeah, it sounds uh, it sounds awesome. And I think it's it's both fun to kind of just have at home because there's so many uh, options. Um, and also, I think it's going to be really great for recording, especially getting some some tones that are a bit different to like the the typical kind of um, fifty one fifty tones that are sort of the generic go to metal tones. Um, so I hope you really enjoyed this video, and uh, if you have, then uh, leave a comment and a thumbs up, and uh, consider subscribing. Um, going a sl bit slow with the videos these days, but I'm trying to ramp up speed and and put out more videos. Um, yeah, I both have some of the videos on the riffs and also on sweep picking that I want to get back into and do. And I'm also thinking about doing a video, uh, kind of going back to the cabinet comparison that I did, um, and sort of do a shootout of microphones instead of cabinets. So having like one or two cabinets and then trying a bunch of different microphones just to see what, what difference do you get, right? So hopefully that's uh, coming um, a bit later. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but bye for now and thanks for watching.